Alright guys, it is another blistering hot, sticky, miserable midsummer day in October in hell in uh, the former paradise of Garfield, Texas here in the end times on Tuesday, October 2nd, 2018. So uh, I have been giving myself heat stroke and a hernia all day out in my garden and so finally uh, the sun has sent me into the shady doomsday barn to uh, where I can spend a little time diving into the mainstream media's doomer headlines for the day. So I just finished part one, the climate change roundup rant and now we're going to dive in to uh, part two of today's doomer headlines on this hot summer day in October. Um, uh, which have, well, after this first story, don't have a lot to do with climate change. I actually mentioned this first story in part one in my climate change roundup, but I wanted to, uh, just offer one more, one more, uh, take on this story about Donald Trump, that, uh, old anti- globalist, anti-globalist Donald Trump, you know, sucking up, sucking, uh, who, Pierre Trudeau's dick, or was Pierre sucking Donald's dick? Anyway, I guess they were 69ing or something. I don't even know if the guy from Mexico was invited, uh, as these fucking little, uh, planet eaters, uh, and, you know, having their little, uh, uh, they're a little whatever. Uh, anyway, environmental groups air doubts about North American trade deal. Campaign groups from Greenpeace to the Sierra Club on Monday slammed the new U.S.-Canadian-Mexican trade deal for its weak provisions on environmental uh, issues. Yes. Trump said the retooling would turn North America back into a manufacturing powerhouse oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's and fuel U.S. economic growth. Ha, uh, there you go. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yet, the new, now it's called Uzmica, Uzmica, yes, does not go far enough to protect the population and the global environment, critics argue. Yes, uh, it is no surprise that climate change was nowhere mentioned within Trump's new agreement. Yes, uh, that leaves intact. Uh, what amounts to NAFTA's bad rule book and the growth of the oil industry. Uh, there you go. You know, guys, uh, let's see. I love this one. The new agreement does recognize the significance of ocean plastic pollution and expectation that a multilateral environmental agreement could be ironed out to end single-use plastic, one of the main forms of ocean pollution. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Yes, uh, anyway, I talk about uh, the giveaway to the oil companies in the in part one. That's what it really was. Like like everything else that that motherfucker does is just one more uh, way, just one more giveaway of uh, both U.S. public lands and the Alberta tar sands uh, to the oil and gas companies. It uh, the new UMSCA was written by the oil and gas industry. 
the oil and gas industry is much stronger uh, today. Uh, well, I mean, Congress still has to approve it, which they will. Okay, let's move on to other, as long as we're over there talking about the Trump administration, what is the EPA up to? Mercury can cause brain damage in kids. The EPA wants to weaken rules on its emissions. <coughs> the Trump administration is taking steps to significantly weaken regulations that curb the amount of mercury that power plants are allowed to emit according to multiple reports. Yes, the EPA has sent a legal proposal to the White House that would hobble the 2011 Mercury and Air Toxic Standards Rule. Uh, the proposal would not completely eliminate um, limits on power plant emissions of mercury and other toxic pollutants but according to the New York Times, it is, quote, designed to put in place the legal justification for the Trump administration to weaken it and several other pollution rules. Yes, considered by the World Health Organization to be one of the top 10 chemicals of major public health concern, mercury is a potent neurotoxin that can cause brain damage and other negative health effects and also adversely affect wildlife. Coal-fired power plants are the single largest source of mercury contamination in the U.S. Huh. And if the rules are weakened, it would represent a major win for the coal industry which has for years pushed for the rules rollback. But, uh, you know, the unbelievably, the, the Environmental Protection Agency is actually throwing $332 million towards a toxic mercury site in the shithole state of New Jersey where a polluted creek near MetLife Stadium in the Meadowlands Sports Complex that has some of the highest recorded mercury levels of any freshwater ecosystem in the entire country is moving ahead with a $332 million cleanup plan. The EPA announced this morning Several companies operated a mercury processing plant there from the late 20s to the mid 70s. Blah, blah, blah. It was designated a super fun site in the mid 80s. And so anyway, you know, all of this sounds, sounds fine. Uh, it, it, it sounds all fine and dandy on the surface. And then they, you know, the mainstream media breaks it all down, but then they have to go talk to those damn killjoys uh, over there at the New Jersey Sierra Club. Uh, I love this guy's name, Jeff Tittle. Jeff Tittle, uh, director of New Jersey Sierra Club, welcomed the cleanup, but said it may not be enough due to strong river and tidal flows exacerbated by sea level rise that will eventually cause the caps, these caps that they're putting to fail. Quote, if we don't have a thorough and long-term cleanup plan, all we're doing is creating a toxic nature preserve. <laughs> yes, a toxic nature preserve. All right, what's going on over there in the shithole uh, country of Indonesia? Desperation grows as death toll soars from Indonesian quake. I can't remember who the tribes member was 
telling me that um, that there's reports of people eating each other in Indonesia today. But uh, I guess he was being ironic. There was no link. But it is getting pretty fucked up over there. And I was just listening to NPR talking about how the cops are, are now blocking people from coming inside these hard uh, hit cities to keep the looting down. And it's fresh water is... Uh, no shit, Sherlock, become the latest source of desperation. Um, trucks carrying food for desperate survivors of the earthquake on Indonesia's Sulawesi Island rolled in with a police escort Tuesday to guard against looters, while the death toll from the disaster has now officially soared past 1,200. Uh... Four days uh, after the quake and tsunami struck, supplies of food, water, fuel, and medicine had yet to reach the hardest hit areas. There you go. Many roads in the earthquake zone are blocked and communication lines are down. And you know, guys, this, this earthquake is just this one more little peek into the future, and I'm not talking about earthquakes, it's just such a perfect metaphor. I, you know, what it's going to look like on this planet. I, I, anybody uh, trying to understand what it's going to look like on this damn planet. Uh, as people start to figure out you cannot have unlimited growth on a finite planet, it's, it's going to look a hell of a lot like Indonesia. And, uh, and, and I want to see the goddamn cops keeping the Mad Max looters. You know, when this, when, th when this whole thing goes fucking belly up, I mean, the cops are going to be looking out for the cops. The looters are going to be looking out for the looters. And uh, I'm going to be looking out for my little dog. Anyway, what's going on over in the South China Sea? many versions of this story. U.S. says Chinese destroyer came dangerously close to U.S. ship. Hmm. A Chinese destroyer came <coughs> aggressively close to a U.S. Navy ship in the South China Sea, forcing it to maneuver to prevent a collision. The U.S. Pacific Fleet said Tuesday, describing an encounter that could worsen tensions between the nations. The Chinese warship approached the U.S. warship in a, quote, unsafe and unprofessional maneuver on Sunday near Gavin's Reef in the South China Sea. There you go. Uh, it approached within 45 yards of the U.S. ship. China claims most of the strategic waterway and has built islands, blah, 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 and equipped them with military facilities. Yes, the Chinese Defense Ministry said this morning it opposes the U.S. warship's entry into the waters around China's islands and reefs. Hmm. Yes, it, con it did confirm that the Luoyang, a Chinese missile destroyer, was immediately deployed to identify the U.S. warship and drive it away. The Chinese Foreign Ministry added it strongly urges the U.S. to stop its provocative actions. Yes, and behind all this, Beijing said the U.S. has no right to interfere in Chinese military cooperations with Russia. There you go. Uh, U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis 
has dropped his plans to visit China this month for talks. There you go. But let's go over where uh, I don't know if Melania Trump is heading to South Sudan or not. What's going on in the, the single biggest shithole country on the planet? South Sudan. Hunger and fighting persist despite peace in South Sudan. South Sudan's warring leader signed another peace deal last month. But while the political elites prepare to carve up power, once again, hunger and fighting continue far from the capital. And anyway, uh, they're talking about all of the the six point a that a man-made famine has been declared uh, in South Sudan. A man-made famine has been well. It's a man and woman-made famine. Uh, it's not just a man made, it, it is a man and woman made famine. Uh, the latest assessment issued Friday found that 6.1 million people are going hungry. The Pierre Voltaire of the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization said, quote, conflict is the main driver of this desperate situation. No, Pierre, fucking is the main driver of this desperate situation. And, uh, okay, let's hear from one of these, you know, they always like to go out and uh, interview some of the locals. As a result of the conflict, people are barely surviving. Quote, food is a challenge. There is very little, said 28-year-old John Jalam, father of eight children, as he collected his family's aid rations of sorghum. Food is a challenge. There is very little, said 28-year-old South Sudanian John Jalin, father of eight, 28 years old, father of eight children, he said as he collected his family's rations of sorghum from a foreign food aid distributor. Okay, let's go down to the shithole country of Zimbabwe. We are winning the cholera battle. Health and child care minister uh, Dr. Moy, Dr. Obadah Moyo on Saturday said the Zimbabwean government was winning its battle against the cholera outbreak that has so far killed 49 people from the more than 10,000 cases reported so far. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. <sighs> Let's go over to the shithole country the countries of Korea, I guess they're trying to patch things up. Uh, you know, they're removing those those landmines, and now North Korea's Kim Jong-un sent two puppies as a peace, a peace gift to South Korea. Yes, so we now have Koreans sending puppies to each other. Uh, you know that that's kind of like sending a a 
Bucky's barbecue sandwich uh, from Texas to Oklahoma. There, it, it is. It was. It does not say in here whether the puppies, uh, how they were prepared, uh, whether. Well, you know, they they do a lot of barbecuing in in South Korea, I believe. I mean, I see Korean barbecues here in Austin, Texas. I am very nervous going to a place called a Korean barbecue. I don't know about you guys, but uh, they probably were some tasty little puppies. Oh, good God. Okay. Two more. Let's come on over to our own country, to the shithole state of Florida. This could only happen in Florida or Texas. Florida man attempts to buy eight-year-old girl for $200,000 at Walmart. And what I'm unclear is, why was Walmart charging $200,000 for an eight-year-old girl? Uh, you can go over, you know, hell, you, you can probably just, you can go down to Haiti or Mexico, uh, you, you know, you can buy, uh, you can probably buy 15 or 28 year old girls for $200,000. So I'm not sure why Walmart is selling eight year old girls for $200,000. And this and this nice man in Walmart uh, trying to buy a, uh, an eight year old girl for $200,000 and they end up arresting this man. No, I bet he's going to take his money down to Haiti. But we're going to uh, end up uh, with this clueless moron who I've never heard of, Kyrie Irving. Have you ever heard the name? I've never in my enter entire life. Okay, he's a Boston Celtics star. Is that Boston Celtics or Celtics? I don't know. Or the Celtics Celtics? Is that... Was it football, basketball? Anyway, I don't know. He's one of these multi-million dollar clueless fucking moron athletes. Kyrie Irving wishes he had never said the world is flat. Yes, Boston Celtics star Kyrie Irving is sorry he ever said the earth was flat. Oh, basketball. On Monday, the Hoops superstar appeared at the Forbes Under 30 Summit and asked if he still believes the world is flat. Irving did not say that he had changed his mind on the subject, but he did apologize for ever bringing up the subject. Uh, I'm sorry about all that. Uh, what's, what did... What was his original quote? This is not even a conspiracy theory. The Earth is flat, Irving said during a recent interview when he's been eating shit ever uh, since uh, that. But then what he's talking about here is... Uh, it, 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 you know, but now he believes the world is flat. But what he's talking about here is if you have any out of the box ideas. And my guess is that there are more people, I'm quite sure there's more people on the planet that believe the earth is flat than I uh, believe we cannot have uh, infinite growth on a finite planet. I, I, I am virtually sure. Uh, of that. And so I understand exactly what this flat earther uh, is, is talking about. Well, you know, getting frustrated. You know, he apologized for it, but then everybody's been there. Everybody, well, a tiny few people have been there. Everybody's been there like, whoa, what's going on with our world? Even if you believe in that whatever that is, whether you believe in the flat earth or whether you believe you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet, uh, and above all, if you believe 
we are so fucked, even if you believe it, just don't come out and say that stuff. That is for intimate conversations because perceptions while you're received and it changes. Blah, blah, blah. Yes. Just don't come out and say that stuff. That's for intimate conversations. Intimate conversations, my ass. When was the last time uh, you had an intimate, intimate, enema conversation? Had an intimate conversation with one of your clueless fucking moron friends that we're fucked. You will get the same look uh, that you will get uh, that flat earthers get. We're a bunch of fucking wackos. As eco uh, eco Nazi doomers waving around our we are so fuck sign. We are more despised on this planet than the flat earthers and the the climate change deniers and all the rest of them. And this is just one more reason we are so fucked. But I'm gonna wrap this up because the sun is going down and maybe I can actually get out there and uh, do a little more shoveling in the garden here at twilight in the end times. Smoke them if you've got, got them and get out there in your garden. Get back to the garden while you still can. Bye guys.